Bedroom Junkies. I'm your host, Ashley Flowers. And I'm Britt. And today I want to tell you about a beautiful young woman whose brutal murder at the height of summertime shattered her community's sense of safety forever. And in the process, set police's sights on a monster hiding right in their very mix. This is the story of Sierra John. When COVID hit and quarantine soon followed, I was forced to reevaluate all of the hobbies I had in my life. I couldn't go out with friends anymore. I couldn't plan trips, couldn't travel anywhere. I had to stay home. Because of this, I spent a lot of time alone in my own head, um, working on art, but these things couldn't keep me occupied forever. And I reached out on Twitter and asked people for recommendations on podcasts because I love just having background noise while I did like daily tasks and it made me feel less lonely unless like I was alone by hearing other people like talk and when I found the podcast Crime Junkie it was even better because the way it's set up it's two girls Brent and Ashley and they just have a friendly persona about them like a friend telling you a story but they're telling you true crime cases and I ended up getting super into the stories the podcast in general um, so much so that I started to explore other podcasts and got very into morbid but because of this I was doing it every day and really began to dive into the world of true crime hey weirdos I'm Ash and I'm Elena and this is morbid Consistently listening to this podcast started making me make connections to my own life. A lot of these girls were college age. Um, of course, not everyone, but a majority of these girls were young, like 20, 19, 18, which are the ages of my two sisters, both of them in college as well. I always remind them to lock doors, take pepper spray with them. If they're out with friends, never leave, let anyone leave alone at night. Don't get in an Uber alone. Let people know where you are. I tell them all of these things in hopes that it reduces the risk of something horrible like this happening to one of them. I couldn't even imagine. Um, but unfortunately, we live in a world where being a woman isn't safe. We live in a world where men can find a woman they are just obsessed with immediately in a grocery store and follow them around and follow them to their car and abduct them. Um, we live in a world where girls aren't even safe in their own home because some of these men target women who are just comfortable at home through watching through the windows. And the fact that this isn't like lore or horror stories these are real events it just makes it that much scarier listening to these podcasts made me realize that no matter how safe you feel in your own bubble or if nothing scary like this is really something you recognize going on around you that isn't entirely true if you start doing some digging and listening to these cases even looking up by city like there's things that probably happened in your same town, your apartment complex over and it was just underreported or you just haven't heard about it because it happens so often. There are so many stories they can't all make the news. And it is crazy realizing that and listening to these podcasts and finding out about a case that was right next to where I grew up that I had no idea about. And the case I'm talking about is Georgetown, Texas, Rachel Cook. The FBI is offering an up to $50,000 reward for information that helps to find a missing college student from outside Austin, Texas. Rachel Louise Cook, then 19 years old, was abducted while on a morning run near her home in Georgetown, Williamson County in January of 2002. Rachel's mother, Janet, begs anyone with information to come forward. Rachel was a very good soul and 
and that hurts me because whoever took her took somebody that could make a huge contribution to this world. FBI Special Agent Justin Noble. The FBI is partnering with the Winston County Sheriff's Office to find a resolution in this 15-year-old investigation. We are absolutely committed to finding Rachel. Sheriff Robert Chowdy says closing this case will help Rachel's family and the tight-knit community to heal. Can you imagine if this was a child of yours? As a father, I can't imagine what the Cook family has endured all these years. Please bring Rachel home to her family where she belongs. To report tips, dial 1-800-CALL-FBI or visit tips.fbi.gov. With Wanted by the FBI, I'm Molly Halpern of the Bureau. Rachel Cook was a 19-year-old college student that grew up in Georgetown, Texas, but ended up leaving the city to attend her dream school in San Diego, San Diego Mesa College. After a long and hard fall semester, she returned home to Georgetown to stay with her family over winter break. But just because she was on winter break, she wasn't going to completely cut her routine. You see, Rachel was a runner and did a daily four-mile run in the morning. Of course, like during the daylight, it's safe. She can go running. And she did just that at 9.30 a.m. January 10th, 2002. She left for a run while her parents were at work and never returned home. She was last seen by a jogger walking only 200 yards away from her house, walking towards her house, meaning she almost made it home. It's been 19 years and there's still been no breaks in the case or any knowledge gained to the police about what might have happened to Rachel. The parallels this case has to my own life really struck a chord with me. Both of my sisters are around this age and they both are soccer players and go running in the morning both of them two miles or more. So then I and Rachel had a lot in common. And thinking about this happening to her in her own neighborhood where she felt entirely safe obviously makes me related to my sisters who do the same thing in our childhood neighborhood, even when we're all back at home for breaks. And this happened in Georgetown, Texas, only 20 minutes away from where I grew up and spent my childhood in Round Rock. It baffles me that this was my first time hearing about Rachel from the entirety of my childhood and life. Especially now that my sisters are Rachel's age and go for runs in the morning as well. Because it's daylight and safe. Rachel had so much more to give to the world and had so much more room to grow and thrive as an adult and was completely robbed of it. This is one of the most grievous things I can imagine happening to a person or someone they love. While thinking and acknowledging these reports isn't the most pleasant thing, it's crucial to recognize that these things do happen and can happen. A reminder to not let friends walk home alone at night, a reminder to stay vigilant and stay safe yourself.